Hello, my friends. Welcome to my channel, Lindy's Magpie Reads. I'm Lindy. I'm back from 10 days of holiday in Victoria. I did do a quick little vlog of, of my adventures there, if you're interested. I'll link it below. Lots of flowers, lots of birds, gardens. Wah! I had a great time with one of my sisters. We did a kind of knitting retreat, so. There's knitting in that uh, vlog as well. Today I'm going to try and catch up on some of the books that I have finished since my last Friday Reads. It's been a little while, so I'm going to focus on the ones that I did as part of various March read-alongs today. And then on Friday, I'll do a Friday Reads with more focus on the April readathons because there's so much going on on BookTube. Always exciting. But before I even get into that, I just want to mention how happy I am about Ducks coming out on top in Canada Reads. It was championed by Matea Roach. They are a non-binary writer and podcaster podcasting comes up later in this video too. Matea Roach talked about how the industry in ducks, which is the oil and gas industry, is something that we are all implicated in. We all use petroleum products to some point, even if we're not working in the industry. And this memoir is fantastic. If you haven't picked it up yet, People April is a good time to do that. I will link more information about the Canada Reads results and Matea Roach down below. Through most of this book, Kate Beaton is working in the oil patch, the tar sands in northern Alberta. But there is also a section where she's working in Victoria, BC. And that's the place where I was just at and one of her colleagues asks her, have you had high tea at the Empress yet? What am I, the queen? She says. Yeah, my sister wanted to have high tea at the Empress and we actually ended up having it at Bouchard Gardens instead. It was lovely, very special. So now <laughs> I'm the queen, I don't know. There were a couple of books in March that I did not finish, and the first one is more of a, I'll put it down for now, and that is Tomb of Sand by Gitanjali Shri, translated by Daisy Rockwell. I was listening to this in audiobook, and I thought that I would read it for March of the Mammoths. It's not quite 800 pages, it's 700 and some, uh, and I think that I will enjoy it. I was not clicking with the audiobook. It's, I don't think the narrator's fault, uh, but the style is in vignettes, and after an hour and a bit, I was still just kind of lost and not into it, and I realized I'm not in the right mood right now. So I put it down for now. I will pick it up probably in print rather than audio. We shall see. And the other one I didn't finish, I don't plan to pick up again. Uh, I think it's just not for me. It's The Far Cry by Alyssa York. I've read one of her books previously, Fauna, I really enjoyed that. This one is historical fiction set in the 1920s on the coast of British Columbia. And I thought that it would fit right in with my upcoming holiday to British Columbia. But it's a story of a young man who came from Norway to work in fishing in Canada and his niece. The, the man, when he was younger, had had an affair with another man, a young Chinese man, and now he's the, talking to his niece, 
whose mother has run off with the Chinese camp cook and his niece is in her teens and is kind of struggling to find her way in life. There's lots of historical details uh, and I just wasn't in the mood for that. Um, there's also something about uh, a, a straight woman, I assume she's straight, I don't know, she's married to a man, writing about a gay male relationship that just didn't quite, it, maybe it was that that didn't quite sit well with me, or maybe it's just that I don't care to read about romance, but in any case, that one set aside. I picked it up for the Shadow Giller. It's eligible this year. Fingers crossed that it won't be on that long list. Well, even if it is, I'm, it, it's just not for me. So now, on to the books that I did finish. I'm going to start with one that I picked up for middle grade March, Lightfall Volume 1, The Girl and the Galdurian. It's by Tim Probert. Graphic novel, this was recommended by Shelley Swearingen, and <laughs> it's great. It's so cute. It's a fantasy adventure story, a quest, basically. And the Galdurian, everybody thinks he's a frog. He has the opposite character of the girl, B, who has so many anxieties and worries, whereas Cad, the Galdurian, is uh, everything is exciting. This is this is what life is for: to have adventures and to uh, um, experience things. And uh, risks are good because it means that you're living life to your fullest. So he's got something to teach B, and there are two quite lonely characters, and so they're friendship is really wonderful too. The art is in a somewhat subdued palette, kind of antique looking, which uh, suits this story. It's cartoony and fun. So in addition to the humor though, I liked these underlying elements of mental health and the question of how do we live our lives all done in an age-appropriate middle grade level. Well, this is a book that I would recommend for all ages, actually. It's only volume one. I will pick up volume two eventually, I think. Yeah, pretty fun. And now I've got a little frog interlude for you. Uh, some of the totem poles that I saw when I was in Victoria have a frog element like this one that was right in front of the legislature building and another thing that my sister and I did was we went to the wildlife photography exhibit at the m museum there. It's a worldwide photojournalism competition done every year through the Natural History Museum in London and uh, if you can see it, it, it travels around the world. So maybe you've seen it already, let me know in the comments. Um, but if it's still coming to you, watch for it. It's been going for 50, 58 years, something like that. I have seen it before, a uh, different year. The photos are displayed in huge format with light behind and there's a description of what you're seeing in the photograph but also information about the photographer. So for example in this image of frogs they talk about how the photographer was slogging through the water covered in leeches, you know, that kind of thing, to get these amazing photos. Okay, back to the books now. This next one is an audiobook. I Have Some Questions for You by Rebecca Mackay. This one is part of my March Mystery Madness reading. 
There are a whole bunch of hosts for March Mystery Madness. I will link my friend Maya's channel down below. She's just one of them. Uh, it is the story of a group of high school students at a boarding school on the east coast of the U.S. who had a, a three-week course taught by a former student at the boarding school. Now she's a, a film professor and a well-known podcaster and so her students have a choice of what they want to do a short podcast on and one of them chooses a murder that happened at that boarding school when the teacher was a student there. So it was in the mid-90s, something like that, and it was the teacher's, uh, she had been her roommate, Thalia, this, this uh, teenager who was killed. And the question is, was the wrong person convicted of the crime? Ever since uh, this black athletic instructor was convicted, there have been people protesting and saying, you've got the wrong guy. And so that's what's explored in this novel, which has um, a kind of a slow burn pace, and I like that. And I also really liked that the issues of misogyny and rape culture are explored really well in here. A bunch of true cases come up in quick succession in a way that kind of reminded me of what Audrey McGee did in The Colony. And so there's that, plus the racialized element, element of wrongful incarceration. And in the audiobook, which is read by Julia Whalen, there is just one section read by J.D. Jackson. That's quite an important part of the story and the rest of it is in the voice of this professor, which I can't remember her name, um, but she's writing it in second person address, talking to someone that's it's not clear until quite a ways into the story from what I remember. So I'm not going to say any more than that, but this second person address format is also um, part of the appeal for me. I read another book in March that used that format, Catherine Hernandez's is The Story of Us. So yeah, don't come across it too often, but I kind of like it. Anyway, all these things added up to a very enjoyable read. Now these next three books are brought to you by the letter B. They all happen to start with that letter. No, no other connection between them. This first one is also for March Mystery Madness. It's called Bog Bodies. It's a graphic novel that was created by a team of Irish creators. The two main ones are Declan Shalvey and Gavin Fullerton. It's a crime noir kind of story, <laughs> very dark. It's about the criminal element in Ireland during the time of the Troubles and bodies getting buried, uh, something that's been happening for 500 years. The art uses really rich, black, heavy lines and faces are very expressive. My favorite character is uh, the Aunt Maureen, lives out on her own with a lot of ghosts around her. So this one also does double duty because March is the time to read Irish authors. I don't know if there's an actual Irish readathon, but because of March 17th, I'm always looking for 
what Irish content I can add to my reading, and that's why I picked this up. A couple of other books that I picked up in March by Irish authors were Claire Keegan's Walk the Blue Fields and a collaboration between Cherry Smith and Craig Jordan Baker called If the River is Hidden. In that last book, the word banjaxed comes up, and it also comes up in bog bodies. So there's another thing that happens when I'm reading books from the same part of the world. I'll you know, encounter words that I might not encounter otherwise, and I'm more likely to remember them if I read them twice. Tell me in the comments below if you're familiar with that term, banjaxed. I'm not going to tell you what it means. Um, I want to see if any of you already know. Next up is an audiobook, Bola, by Paitim Statozzi, uh, who is a Albanian Finnish writer. And this was translated from Finnish by David Haxton. The Finnish edition won the Finlandia Prize, which is kind of the biggest uh, literary prize in Finland, as far as I know. Another very dark story. Now, I heard about this on Sean's channel. He does a series called Bite Sized Book Chats. And another booktuber, Larry Has Opinions, talked about this. It took me a while to decide that I was going to stick with it. I am a person who puts myself into the characters, and the main character, Arsim, is not a great guy. He's gay and very closeted. He has a good reason. This is 1995 in Kosovo. He's living in Pristina, Kosovo. He's newly married, and his wife is pregnant, and he falls for this guy who is Serb. So he's an Albanian, Moisha is a Serb, and you know it's not going to end well. The war starts in Kosovo, and Arsim and his family become refugees in another country. But the story has two tellers. The other one is Moisha's point of view, uh, as written in a journal. And we go forward about eight or nine, maybe ten years, something like that. So what happens in this stretch of time is all pretty tragic. Um, but it's also really affecting. War just destroys lives and there's another kind of destruction that happens when you hide such an integral part of yourself as being gay and I think that's shown really well here too. There's a lot of violence and hard times basically. Yeah. I do recommend this book if that sounds like the kind of things that appeal to you. The audiobook, by the way, has two narrators, Michael Crouch and Tyler Kent. So that works well too, since there's two voices in the book. And last up is my favorite of all of these that I've told you about so far. Eleanor Catton's new book, Burnham Wood. I picked this up in the airport when I was on my way to Victoria. I couldn't resist. It was on sale. I just really wanted to read it. I loved the luminaries so much and I was not disappointed. It was good that I had something that I was so keen to read because my flight ended up being delayed by three hours. So I was in the airport a lot longer than I expected, not to mention being on a two-hour flight to Victoria from Edmonton. 
So I got a sizable chunk of it red just in getting there. But then once I got to Victoria, I was mostly knitting. So I did not do a lot of reading, but I did finish that one. And it wasn't until I finished it that I saw on the cover these little drones that are a feature in the story. There's a whole bunch of characters and they're all sort of borderline farcical caricatures, but none of them actually are. One of them is a tech multimillionaire. That's where the drones come into it. And we have a New Zealand couple who own land that is right up next to a national park in the south part of the South Islands in the mountains. And we have a group of young people who are part of a guerrilla gardening organization. And they're, I think, in a place like Christchurch, I don't think it's ever named, but they grow food on land that's not otherwise being used sometimes with permission, sometimes not. And this land that's next to a national park is land that they start using. It's called an eco-thriller, but it's a slow burn. There's a lot of buildup before the pace starts to get faster and faster near the end and the end is explosive. I love that kind of ending. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about it. A lot happens. <laughs> um, but before that, uh, right from the start, there are two women who are in this gardening group. Mira, who's one of the uh, original founders, and her friend and roommate, Shelley, who's uh, kind of the person who does all the work. So their relationship is not good because of this power imbalance. And you get to see the group dynamics, the clash between the idealists and the pragmatists in long conversations that happen at these meetings where everything is decided by consensus. It reminded me of meetings I used to attend went back when I was in my 20s. So the, the characterization is there. Uh, but you see a lot of the bad side of people in addition to their good qualities. So if you like that sort of characterization, I think you will enjoy this. It really caught me up. The whole idea of it, the surprises, uh, yeah, just really well done. Totally up my alley. I was there in New Zealand, digging in the dirt, planting things. It's not happening right now in Edmonton. We're still icy frozen, but it will come. And that's all I got to tell you about today. Thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate hearing from you, so say hello down below, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye for now.